Hello everybody, today we will be going over a trigonometry problem at the IB Math AISL level. And just a disclaimer, we will be using a lot the sine rule. Okay, this problem is particularly useful for learning the sine rule. So we have a triangle farm is showing in the diagram below. The edges A, B are located on a bank of the river, while the farmhouse is located at the point C on the opposite bank of the river. At a safe distance from the river, that is good. This di the, di la la la. <laughs> the distance from point A to point B is 300 meters, which they already depicted over there. The angles A, B, C are 60 and C, A, B, 52 respectively. Everything is annotated in the diagram. Beautiful. See? So first things first, we need to find the size of angle B, C, A. Now the angles inside of a triangle add up to 180. See? That means that this guy plus this guy plus this guy has to equal 180. That means this guy plus this guy plus whatever C is, cierto, has to equal 180, right? Now, when I write C, maybe some of you don't like it that I put it that way, so I'm going to write A, C, B, see? So that is the angle that I'm talking about. This has to equal 180, right? So I'm going to combine like terms. We end up with 52 plus 60 being 112 plus A, C, B equals 180. That tells us that A, C, B is 180 minus 112, which is, of course, 68. See? So that is for part A, angle ACB is 68. I'm just going to go ahead and write it over here, 68. See? So again, the rule of thumb here is that a triangle adds up to 180. That is how you solve part A. All right, for part B, when you calculate the distance from A to C, then from B to C, and the length of the perimeter. See? So. I mentioned earlier that here we need to use the sine rule. See, now before we jump into the sine rule, I think it's important to understand the intuition behind it. See, so the sine rule, the formula looks a little bit like this. We have little a divided by sine a, sine big A equals b divided by sine big B. See, equals c divided by sine big C. Now I'm using the words big C, little a, etc. for a reason. See. The thing is, um, whichever angle you have, so I'll make it the same as the diagram is showing, see? Whichever angle you have is going to be big, see? All your, all your angles are big, see? So angles equals big, see? And you can probably tell where this is going. That means the sides corresponding to those angles are little, see? So sides are little or small, see? So Da, 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 da. See? So that is how you use the sine rule. That is what it means. So all the numbers on top are sides or angles. Correct. They are sides. See? On the bottom, we have a bunch of angles because they are big letters. See? Okay. That is the intuition of the sine rule and how to interpret it. Cierto? So we can only use this if we have pairs. What do I mean by this? Right here. I have four things I need to know. Cierto? I need to know A, B, and its corresponding angles, big A, big B. See? So as long as I have three out of four, I can use it. See? So if I have all of them except for A, that is the one variable I need to find, I can solve it. See? So that is kind of like the intuition or the idea that we're going for here. See? So I'm going to go ahead and define little A as this guy here, because this guy is big A. Cierto? And the same for the rest. See, so little c is going to be 300. And little b is going to be over here. See? So what pair do we have right now? Right now, what pair do we have? We have the pair of this 68 with that 300. See? All right. So I'm going to write that here on the bottom left. We have the 300, side 300, with the sine 68. And now, for finding the distance between A to C, it is this guy here, ¿cierto? So it is B. So I'm going to write B here. And now my sine B is going to be whatever angle goes with that side, which is, of course, this 60 over here, ¿cierto? So sine 60, for that same reason. At this point, look, like, if you got here, you got the intuition of the sine rule, that's all that matters, see? So here we can cross multiply. We end up with B times uh, sine 68 equals 300 times sine 60. 
we want to get B alone, so we divide by sine 68 to both sides. We end up with B being equal to 300 times sine 60 divided by sine 68. See? Okay, so I'm going to put that into my calculator. It will look like this. 300, whoops, that was not intentional. 300 times sine 60 divided by sine 68. Okay, so that gives me a value of B, which is pretty much 280. See, so B is pretty much 280, right? All right, um, da, 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 that is for part B, I, see? So AC is going to be 280. And I will also write it over here, 280. Okay, part B, double I is honestly like, the same see it's the same you can use a new pair if you want i'm just gonna stick to the old one because like whatever it doesn't matter but that being said the setup is a little bit different so instead of b here i'm gonna be putting actually da, 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 a because this is the side we're trying to find we're trying to find bc and its corresponding angle is that 52 right there see so i'm gonna put sine 52 down here for that same reason. Again, we cross multiply. So the process is very, very similar. I'll just erase this to leave it make a mega clear. But again, you gotta think in pairs and work from there. See? So once we cross multiply, we end up with 300 times sine 52 equals A times sine 68. See? Divide both sides by sine 68. I'll also flip it because it makes it's just more comfortable for me. We have 300 times sine 52 divided by sine 68. See? We put all of that into our calculator and we have an A of something. See? So I'm going to take this guy here just because it's faster. Change this 60 to A52. Plug in. We end up with A being 254.96. We can round that up to 255. So 255, again, the units I missed on both. So 255 meters, 280 meters, that is A, ¿cierto? And A in this case was a distance, which is the distance I'm about to write, 255, see? So the distance of CB or BC is 255. Now we need to find the length of the perimeter of the farm, ulala, perimeter. So perimeter is just a fancy word for like distance. See, so it's the distance of the whole farm, like around the farm. See, our buzzwords here are going to be perimeter and area, right? So area is going to be like when you take the triangle and you color it in, like that is going to be your area. While perimeter, okay, as I said earlier, is what goes around. So it's going to be what's in red. See, it's going to be all of these sides added up together. So all of those sides added up together is going to be 280 plus 255 plus 300. See, again, 280, 255, 300. Those are the three boys that I'm adding right now. Don't forget the units, it's in meters. I put it in my calculator. We have, we have this 835, see? So 835 meters, see? Make sure you put your units in all of your answers. Okay, that is part B. Now, more importantly, it was a massive introduction to how to use the sign rule. And so, again, just to recap, buzzword or key concept, it works in pairs. See? It works in pairs. Now they tell us that the cost of fencing is 150 per meter. Ojo, per meter. So one meter is going to be $150. For part C, they tell us, calculate the total cost of fencing the whole perimeter of the farm, rounding your answer to the nearest dollar. All right, so the whole perimeter, which is from part B, triple I, ¿cierto? which is this guy here, we ended up with a perimeter of 835. See? So the total cost, if I have 835 meters, ¿cierto? and it's 150 per meter, well, I got to multiply this guy by 150. Bada bim, bada boom. So 835 times 150. 12, 5, 250, 
$125,250. That is part C. Okay. All right. Awesome. For part D, we calculate the area of the farm, rounding your answer to the nearest square meter. So here the challenge is the following. See, so we have CAB, cierto? and it has its corresponding sides. Then we know all that information, etc. And we're very, very used to using base times height divided by two for our triangle. However, the height here is there, which is something that we can get, but it's a little hard, cierto? Because this right here isn't necessarily straight down A and B. In fact, it's not. See, if I draw that height over here, it's it's not straight down the middle. It's hard to get that height. See, so I'm going to show you a little bit of a quicker way in order to get that height. Um, the general idea is that this we use for right triangles. See, and in this case, we do not have a right triangle. We actually have well a triangle that's not a right triangle. See, and so the area formula for when it's not a right triangle is the following. It's a times B times sine C. Oops, and I missed something important. It's in your formal booklet, times one half, see? So this is the area for any triangle, quite literally, see? Now you need to be consistent with the A's, the B's, and the C's, see? What do I mean by this? If we take a close look at, for example, um, this example in red on the right side, cierto? Let's look at big C, cierto? So big C is here, right? And so little a and little b are next to it. What you want to do is you want to pick an angle and the sides next to it, and those are the guys that you're going to use, see? You need to make sure that whichever angle you pick for this formula, see, um, you will not use the corresponding side of the angle. So there's a couple ways to remember this. I think the most intuitive one is, A, you know, pick the angle you're going to use and use the sides that are next to it, period. See, as long as you're consistent in that sense, you can use any pair of angles and any angle, but you need to be consistent with how you approach it. All right, so for the area of the triangle, we're going to have one half, and I'm going to use this angle here, cierto? So that means I have this corresponding side, AC, which we said from part B, I, which is 288. Oops, I erased that by accident. So we have 288 times 300, because it's the other corresponding side, times sine 52. See? So I put all, if, if I put all of that into my calculator, I get this value here. See? 33,096.45. See? And so since we need to round, to the nearest dollar, right? That means we need to round this number here. So I look at this number, whatever it's to its right. And since it's a four, it's less than five, I keep it as it is, see? If it was a five or above, I would be rounding it up. In this case, I leave it as it is. So it's gonna be 33,096 meters squared, see? Squared because we are talking about an area. So that is for part D. Now for the last part, we need to calculate the shortest distance from the house to the river bank. See? Now let's remember that the house is the one up top. See? And so the shortest distance is actually this line that I already I already drew. See? Now this diagram looks a little bit messy, so let me reorganize it a little bit. See? Again, the distance we're going for is from the house, shortest distance to the river bank. So it's gonna be there. See? The river bank they said is AB earlier. See, they told us that AB is the riverbank and that C is the house. So the shortest distance is that, see? Now, because I drew a straight line, that means there is a 90 degree angle right here, see? And so now we need to see, okay, what do I know about that triangle? See, so I'm gonna draw that triangle out, which is something like that, cierto? So we have B, C, and I'm gonna call this point, whatever, I'll call it P, see? So what do we know about this? We know that this is 90 degrees. We know that this is 60. We know that CB, cierto, from this part here, is 255. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I need to find is this height here. We, I need to find CB, CP, sorry. I need to find CP. 
And with that, I have the shortest distance from the house to the riverbank. There's a couple ways to work from here. The first thing I suggest you should see is that, hey, I can fill in this angle here. This has to be 30, see? Um, because all angles add up to 180, etc. blah, blah, see? The second thing is, do I have any pairs? You always want to try to go, go for pairs. I think it's the most intuitive approach. I see that I have this uh, side with this angle, cierto? And I have this angle, and then you find that side, see? And so, boom, that is three out of four, cierto? I have two angles, one side, and one side that I'm missing. That's three out of four, the same three out of four I mentioned earlier. So, I can have um, 255 divided by sine 90 equals CP, cierto? the distance, divided by sine 60. Cross multiply, 250 times sine 60 equals CP times sine 90. I'm going to make a little bit of space here, apologies. So here I divide by sine 90 to both sides to get CP alone. I'll also flip it because it feels comfortable. CP equals 255 times sine 60 divided by sine 90. See, I plug all of this into my calculator and I get my value for CP. CP is going to be, let's check it out. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Bada bim, bada boom, 220. 220.836 meters. That is party. E. That is how you solve this problem. The biggest thing I can share here is understanding this diagram in red that I drew here. See? Understanding what is little a, what is big A, little B, big B, little C, big C. And through that, it becomes much more evident how the sign rule works in the first place. See? Again, when you have the IB exam, one of the few things you have is the formula booklet. See? So get familiar with it, understand what the formulas share with you, and at the end of the day, it's a tool. See? So I hope that today you learned a couple. Anyways, that's all for me. I'll see you around. Take it easy.